Hello, Barkat. Are you online? Good evening, um, Mr. Ejiro. Welcome, sir. Um, apologies for the delay. No problem. There was a technical issue from our end. Sir, can no you hear me? Please? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? So, age work maintenance training is one of those components required within the building or a, a, a workspace. Without air conditioning system, a lot of things will not be done well. The value of your property will not be appreciated and you will not be able to give the comfort required within that space. So I'm an old engineer, Odibo, uh, a facility manager, a mechanical engineer, also a master degree holder in the field. I also work in a facility company presently also put all these things out, you are going to be taught into practice. So I expect every, every one of us to pick one or two things as the training goes ahead. So we can use the opportunity to do our introduction. So who goes first? And tell us your name, what you do. Hello. Hello. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, sir. I'm Olu Femi Ogunke, and okay. uh, I'm an architect. I work in the oil and gas industry. Oh, okay. You yeah, are welcome, sir. So, next. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Kazim Olubade. I currently work with a real estate firm. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, next. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. My name is uh, Emmanuel Onyenobi. I'm an electrical engineer. Okay. The pleasure, sir. My pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. Next. This is just a shit. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. I can. Go ahead. This is just a shit. I work with okay. an environmental service providing company. Oh, okay. So it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. So, next. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Bumi Obidare. Okay. I'm a realtor. Okay. I have to say I'm buy properties. I also um, maintain a few ones. Okay. You're welcome, madam. The Thank first, you. the first in the house, I guess. <laughs> sir? Okay. I said the first females for today. Oh, okay. That, uh, uh, okay. Thank okay. You. Next, my name is Abayomi Odekoya. I work okay. for one of the private telecom operators in Nigeria. I'm based in the northeastern part of Nigeria. I hope you are safe. Yes, sir. Okay, next. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, my name is Woodland. I work okay. with a real estate um, company right now. Okay, okay. It's a pleasure to have you. Same here. Next. Let us make it snappy. We don't have much time. We're almost 20 minutes late. Uh, let's make it snappy, please. Good evening. My name is Rich Sintete. Okay. Work as a facility manager with Nigerian Cricket Federation. Okay. You are welcome, sir. Next. I'm an architect. Okay. Okay, it's a pleasure. Next. Brackard, I think that is all. Yes, we can proceed. Thank okay. You, sir. Yes. Uh, 
before we go ahead, I will give, I believe everybody can see my screen. Yes. yes. Okay, so uh, you see the topic there, it is HVAC maintenance training. So you would do well to, to, to jot some things down. Those of us are very, very quick to learn. You can understand one or two things along. The course is open for every person that wishes to learn, not only engineers and not only architects and the rest. Those that find interest in facility, architecturing, maintaining a building, where people work, you will find this very interesting. So before I start, um, the H you see within that word is uh, heating. The V is for ventilation, then AC is for air conditioning. And the essence of the training is how to maintain the air conditioning. So in maintaining the air conditioning system, there are things you must put in place. First of all, how do we know how air conditioning works? What is the purpose of air conditioning system? Why do we need air conditioning system within the building? And why should we put more emphasis on maintenance? If you check uh, the culture, mainly of the Blacks, if I might say, that I have seen so far, we are not very good in maintenance. Only some corporate companies that know the value spend fortunes to ensure their assets and properties are kept to standard. So if you check uh, the, the government, the federal sector, state sector and the rest, only very few of these two I've mentioned actually put more uh, maintenance cultures in place. Why will you build the property? After about four or five years, the property is already going into decay because most of the assets in, in, the, in the building are not being taken care of. Not just air conditioning system, every aspect, it could be air conditioning, it could be air conditioning system, it could be your lift, it could be your water system, it could be your swimming pool, it could be, once you don't have that maintenance habit, forget it, the value of your property is going to depreciate with time. Why are people moving to new buildings these days? Because they see the beauty within that building, they see the maintenance plans for the building, and the rest and the rest. And where most facility make money from is the service charge. Essence of the service charge is to keep the facility running without decay. So uh, the question is, what is maintenance? Maintenance in general can be defined as the effort taken to keep the condition a performance of a machine. In this case, your air conditioning system always like the condition a performance of the machine when it is still new. You know, maintenance ensure uh, duration of your equipment. You ensure the lifespan of that equipment extend because you do what you are required to do every time. So at the end of this training, I believe those of us that have that reactive maintenance uh, culture within us will have to drop it. Because uh, if you don't, you are going to ruin the company you work for or you are going to destroy your own career. Because if a lift, most especially for your lift or your air conditioning system, your managers are having a meeting and they ask you, what happened to the AC that is not cooling? Ah, sir, we forgot to maintain it last, last week. That is going to have direct impact on your performance as a facility manager, estate, uh, any person that takes care of property is going to affect it. So what are the key things we look at in this definition? Keep the condition a performance of the machine, always like the condition and performance of the machine when it is new. So that is more like a layman definition for us to understand what it is. So we'll go to the next one. What are the type of maintenance we have? We have what they call the reactive stroke unplanned maintenance. Then we have the pre proactive so and maintenance. When we talk of reactive, reactive is if it doesn't get bad, I will not fix it. Good example of your vehicle, your lift. Each time you enter your vehicle, you perceive or some bad burning cables within your system, or you perceive that the sound from your engine is becoming louder each time you drive. If it doesn't make that sound, you will not fix it. A good habit, we tell you that every month, 
I must change something in my vehicle or quarterly, I must change the oil within my vehicle. Also your air conditioning system, even while it is working very well, you set up a plan to maintain your equipment. An average maintenance plan for air conditioning system is quarterly, every four, four months. The filters must be clean. The outdoor unit must be pressure washed to remove those that can hinder the progress of the cooling of the equipment. Then you check your electrical cables, check your copper pipe, check your insulation, check the electric power rating into the unit. Not check everything is fine because it can actually disappoint also. Then the unplanned world is also the same thing that you are not planning at all. You know, you, you go into some building, you ask them, sir, when last did you maintain your AC? You tell you, I can't remember. Tell you they don't have a planned uh, program for their HVAC. Then the other one, they may tell you, ah, ah sir, ah, it was last day we last did the maintenance for the AC. And when you see the debt on the outdoor unit, the outdoor unit are ACs that are, that are placed outside. Most of us, we know those AC you see that brings out heat. So I'm going to put us through some pictures to know the different kind of AC required within the building. So those give you culture that that place or the building does not have a maintenance plan. And I give you one advice. Before you take over any property, take your time to do what they call conditional assessment or carry out a detailed audit of the building. Before you enter, so many companies have been run because they did not take the right step in the right direction. So before you come in, check the condition of the equipment, do a report and let the client know what you are taking over. Then under that, you have what they call corrective and emergency. So the person that does not take care of his equipment regularly definitely is prone to emergency. Your boss might be one big guy in Nigeria or be one top, maybe your MD. You are at home by 12, he call you that his AC in his room is not working and he needs you to fix it that night. Will you start driving to his house that night? Considering the risk you are going to pass through to get there, there are some people that will tell you must fix it. Some, if they have privilege of going, they have other rooms within their place, they can actually leave their bedroom to sleep in other places. So any unplanned maintenance could actually affect your work, affect your customers, affect the value of your property, and at the end, you are making yourself not valuable to that building. So the proactive and planned maintenance, this is, you take what they call preventive. Preventive maintenance is that you know what could go wrong. So you started putting measures in place to correct it. You know what could go wrong. And you start putting measures to correct it. And when you talk of that, you have what they call constant interval. Constant interval is the example I just gave you, the quarterly maintenance. You make your plan. And don't forget, the quarterly maintenance of air conditioning system vary per site. There are some air conditioning systems because of the environment where they are installed. The maintenance might be every month. There are some that might be every two weeks. The standard environment, if you check around Lagos, areas that have white sand, they don't have much issues like Leki, Ikoyi, some other areas that have very white, pure sand. They don't have issues with uh, maintaining their AC. If you check areas that have plenty of red sand, red sand is a very funny sand, uh, soil. So when it gets dry, it produces dust and it rises up. And your air conditioning that work outside, it works by discharging the hot air and sucking cooler air from the environment. And don't forget, so long dust is in the air, that will also be sucked into the unit. And that, as that is being sucked, the unit is gradually being blocked. And if care is not taken, it could actually affect your compressor. So you must ensure that once you notice that you, the ACs are installed in a dusty environment, you need to change from quarterly, probably to monthly. Then you talk about age-based maintenance. Age-based maintenance are maintenance, you look at these units, these units are looking old though. Even as they are working, does not mean you should not maintain them. There's a unit you look, you just say, let us just overhaul and start maintaining this equipment. Not that not working. So based on their age, you do your maintenance. 
created, we have an imperfect. Imperfect plan is a type that you do, you are not following concurrently what is written, you are just looking at what is adaptable to your site to actually have the equipment working continuously. Then the other type you will have is what they call the predictive uh, type. This predictive is aided by some engineering or graph. When you see, when you plot some graph or the manual call with some graph, it happens mainly in the oil industries. You see that the behavior of that uh, unit begin to deviate from normal to abnormal. Before it breaks down, it notifies you that it is time for maintenance. Not that the equipment has shut down. It's only giving you sign this thing is not working as required. Then you do what is required. Then reliability uh, center. Rehabilitation center is also practiced more commonly in the oil industry and the big industry. These are maintenance that are well defined by the manufacturers. You rely totally on what is supplied to ensure that the equipment is working in well. Then conditional base. The condition of what you see on ground determines what you do. You go around when you are doing your inspection. You will not notice, ah, oil is dripping from this AC. What is happening to this AC? But people are not complaining that it's not working. You just notice. So based on that condition, you have to stop the unit, check what is happening, and you correct it. So those are the different type of maintenance. So I believe all of us now know where we belong. Definitely in the class, some of us were going to fall into this group of reactive maintenance and unplanned. And this is as always leads to emergency. And most of us must have gotten one or two queries if you fall into this line. Then, then those that are doing well in their property and have gotten appraisers and promoted, they are within this particular place. So the essence of this training is to move you from this into the proactive and the planned maintenance. Uh, uh, Barakat, I think we'll save all answers to the end of the class, I guess, or, or should we do it intermittently? Barakat? Sir, at the end of the class, sir. At the end of sir, the class. Yes, sir. Yes, at the end of okay, the okay. class. Okay, at the end of the class, no problem. So our focus will be plan preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance is a regular and a routine maintenance of equipment. An asset in order to keep them running and prevent any costly unplanned downtime from unexpected equipment failure or breakdown. So this is a general definition which suits the air conditioning or the HVAC that we are talking about. Please listen to the term. Preventive maintenance is a regular something that is done periodically and more frequently, and routine maintenance of equipment. You have a plan. Oh, next week is time for maintenance. That means you have a plan on ground, an asset in order to keep the purpose of that practice of preventive is to keep them running and prevent any costly or planned downtime. You have a building that your client is paying, let's say, 500,000, 700, or 1.7 million per annum, or more or 5 million per annum. And they notice that your ACs are not working well. Each time their customer come into the building, they always sweat or see them fanning themselves with their paper or anything. You are going to be, I tell you, in the next one or two months, you are going to lose those customers. Why does beautiful environments and a well-conditioned place attract people? People want to go into a building where they will feel more comfortable. You won't go into a building wearing suit and you are sweating. It doesn't tell well that you are maintaining your equipment in the right state. Banking sector, you see that they put more attention in their headquarters. You go to all these big companies, telecom companies and the rest, they put more attention in what brings people comfort. So I will employ you in your building. If you have not done what they call audits or conditional base assessment, this is an opportunity for you to do, not just for your AC or other components within. Check if do you have a plan preventive maintenance for this asset. If you don't, what are the steps required to take this? Check your uh, your manuals. Check what the, the the manufacturers of the equipment have said about the maintenance. Is your site a condition based type? Is the environment exposed to dust? 
So those questions you ask yourself, we give you an idea of how to now write your report on the conditional space. Don't forget the purpose of preventive maintenance is to ensure your equipment is running uninterruptedly inside. So we'll go to the next one. A successful maintenance strategy require planning. For you to have a successful maintenance plan, you must have what they call planning, the scheduling maintenance. You must plan, then you must do schedule. When you talk about planning, you ask yourself, this equipment, how long does it take for us to be maintaining? How often do we maintain it and the rest? Then you bring out your Excel sheet. For those of us that cannot afford to buy a, a software called uh, eCafem or Eocafe, there's a computer aided facility management. It's expensive, but if you cannot afford, there are some software that can actually prompt you for maintenance. Then one other thing you can also do as a FM, you can use those of us that are on uh, Outlook. You can set up your maintenance plan on your calendar. Calendar can prompt you for maintenance. Then on your phone also, you can program all your assets and the day to give, maybe you want to maintain next week. You can start being a week to that time. You can plan it that the phone, your phone should remind you every time. The contact of those to maintain and their phone numbers within the, within the same calendar. So I'm giving you a clue on how to be successful on your side. I hope I'm in the right place. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so I, like I said, you can use Excel sheets. You can use your Outlook calendar. Then if you have the luxury, you can buy a software. That software has everything that you need. It has the capacity to prompt you to send an email or a text message to you telling you when your equipment is due for maintenance. It makes you to plan with your vendor. It enables you to plan with your technicians on site and thereby impacting on, that, uh, impacting on your performance as a company and as a facility manager. Then the frequency of air conditioning maintenance depends on the quality of each environment, indoor air quality and outdoor air quality. When you talk of indoor air quality, you know, within the space you live, there must be required oxygen for you to survive. And if these air are polluted, definitely you see people sneezing, see people feeling headache, see people feeling dizzy because the quality of air within that environment is not okay for your workers. So you need to take full control of the quality of air within your space. Then you talk of outdoor air quality. Your outdoor air quality have direct impact on what happens in those. If you are, your windows is installed where the fumes from your generators are working well and your windows are always open, you can imagine the level of dust that will be coming into your building. And you've, you must have heard some breaking news in Nigeria that a family of three, a family of four died breathing in carbon monoxide. They actually put on their generator within their room and they were inhaling carbon monoxide, which is CO. They were inhaling it gradually. And what that chemical does is that it suck up the oxygen within your system and start paralyzing every organ within your system. So by morning, if you don't get enough oxygen, the person becomes dead. So you will want to have that within your facility. So the indoor unit sucks air from its environment, cools it, and send this out from your, for your comfort, also with the outdoor unit. So the indoor unit actually cools the air within the space. It does not bring air from outside. It is what you give it that it cools. If the air is of poor quality, it takes the poor quality air in, brings in the poor quality the air out. So in order to purify the air, you need what they call a ventilator. Or you find uh, air, fresh, uh, air fresh air units that you have to install to purify and remove the dirt or death within the environment. So for clean environment, a half year by annual preventive maintenance is required. For moderate environments, now you now take clothes, I've mentioned this indirectly, 
if you are in an environment where the uh, the air is good, a half a year by annual preventive maintenance is required. For moderate environment, quarterly preventive maintenance is required. For polluted environment, a monthly preventive maintenance is required. And for extremely polluted outdoor environment, a fortnight happening or produced every two weeks might be just sufficient. If you go around Lagos, we cannot get a place that is hundred percent clean, except some private companies. But most areas and most buildings within Nigeria fall within the moderate environment, which leave us to maintenance quarterly. Then those of us maintaining properties, maintaining a building, yours might fall within these three. And if you are lucky to have the first one, fine, it helps because your plan actually helps you or aid you to do your budget for maintenance for the year. If you are going to be charging, let's say 2,000 to do your maintenance or 3,000 per unit, and you're having about 100 units within that place, it gives you an idea of how to budget for your maintenance. Please take note of that. So if you are going to take quarterly maintenance, that means your budget is going to be the number of units times the unit cost multiplied by four to give the annual cost. Please take note of that. Then if you are doing monthly, you know the unit cost per one and the number of the equipment, then multiply by 12, which is going to be the yearly cost for monthly preventive maintenance. Then this other one is going to be instead of 12, you are going to multiply by 24 to get it. So whichever system you take, also aid your budget. Going to the next one. So in your building, what you look at in your building mainly are the people. Why do we make, why do we care so much about properties? Why do we care so much about our assets? Because people move into the place in and out of the environment. Your MDs, your customers, your staff, yourself, and the rest. Then what is the purpose of that asset? What is the, pur uh, the purpose of the building? So the process also matters. What are they doing within that place? The location, sometimes the location of a place also determines your attitude towards your maintenance. If you are in a place where the whole company produces a black suit and your units are installed outdoor, it's going to have direct impact on your maintenance. So environment also matters a lot. If you take most of the high-rise buildings in Lagos, you see that their chiller system are actually installed at the apex the highest point of the building, which is on the roof, to aid all, at that point, you can get a cleaner air. You don't install your unit where you have generator that has fumes, you get a black suit and the rest. is going to be affecting the performance of your unit. Please take note of all these things I've mentioned. Then why do we need to maintain our system, our HVAC system, to create comfort for the people? Improve indoor air quality because your AC has a filter that clean up the air. So it, if the environment is dusty, the essence of the filter is to remove those dust from air, clean it, and give you a clean air for you to breathe in. Then if that is assured, you know you are going to be saving money. It also reduces total breakdown. Your, if your units are maintained periodically, it will not break down. And it also increases the lifespan of your unit. It reduces noise from your unit because each time you maintain, you discover something that could lead to a problem. You resolve it before it becomes a bigger problem for you. Then to keep the humidity and the temperature, the temperature within a regulated uh, amount. In the environment, the quality of uh, uh, the humidity is actually, humidity is the quantity of water in air. If you check now, the environment is a little bit, it has high humidity. So you see that you are feeling cold, you are not feeling much. You tell your people, please, can you please lower the AC? That humidity also have the capacity of making you feel okay. But it must not be too high, neither should it be too low. It must be moderate. So your AC has the capacity to regulate the quality of uh, water in air, which is humidity and the temperature within the environment. 
you know, when you enter a place that has no AC, the first thing that welcomes you is the temperature. Once the temperature greets you, the next thing is the brain tells you, please put on the AC. So once that is done, people feel more comfortable, feel more relaxed, and their productivity definitely increases. To improve the efficiency of our electric, this should be our electrical system. Uh, I heard somebody say it's an electrical engineer or he works in the telecom. If you check, most of their base stations are working effectively today because there's air conditioning system. Please take note. The survival of most base sections has been total after power. Your air conditioning system is another thing that ensure continuous use of those equipment. Then those of us that have the capacity to maintain server system within a building. If you go into your server room, you see they are very cold. They are chilly. All the equipment needs to be cooled down. Because if they are not cooled down, some company can actually run off your customers. Somebody wants to withdraw because there's no AC. The units are getting so hot, they have to shut down. So people who want to make recover if you are in the bank, it starts affecting. If there's no AC in the server room, you know what happens. The base station goes off. So people within that location cannot be called. So your AC is a vital component of your environment. And to keep data center running and to increase productivity. From a research that has been conducted, they saw that people work well in a more comfortable environment. Please take note, extreme cooling does not increase productivity. And extreme heat within space does not increase productivity. What I asked, what they, they discover in the research is that comfortable air conditioned environment increase comfort. Please take note of that too. Because some people, when you most especially open office, we have that problem. A group of a group a group of people will tell you this place is too cold. Some people say, please leave the AC. I love it that way. It's getting far. So you know, look, within an office, some parts are, are, are in North Africa and the other part are in Iceland. So you'll not be wondering as a facility manager, who are you to obey? So what most people do, because the control is in that common place, people are tempted to go and regulate the temperature. So as a facility, what you need to do is to put a transparent plastic to lock up those places. So you leave it for your technician to regulate. Please, that has caused problems. When people were tampering with it, the unit was actually a heat pump. So the person did not know when he started pressing the heat part. The whole place became so hot that people were running out of the place. So if you have your technician that have the understanding in check, all those things will definitely be resolved. Those are disadvantages of open office. So HVAC stand for the E, H stand for heating. I've said that. Vent, uh, the V for ventilation. When you say heating, heating, the question you ask is heating required in Nigeria? A number of us will say no, but I will tell you there is a point that heating is required. And close to December or early January, February, when we have what they call a matam, sometimes the environment gets so cold that you cannot perform well. So some people that have those heat pump, they will put on that heat pump at that time. And those of us that have had privilege to travel abroad, you see that there's no hotel abroad that does not have heating equipment because the snow can get so bad that people die within their space before the highs the froze outdoors. And it affects the younger ones and it affects the older ones. So we are not privileged to be in such environment, but Nigeria, some actually requires the heating of space. Then when you talk about ventilation, what is ventilation doing in AC? Ventilation tends to do about movement of air, cool air from one place where it is needed to place, a place it is not needed to place where it is needed. Ventilation is required in your kitchen to remove smoke, smell, heat out of the place. Then it's also required in your toilet. So when people pull in the toilet, the place becomes so messy. If you don't have form of extraction in that place, it makes up the whole place. So a standard building must have form of extraction. 
Then how does it relate to AC? Your AC also do a little bit of ventilation. There are some equipment that actually handle ventilation. They call them ventilator. They actually bring in air from outside, remove the dirt, and pump in fresh air in this place. I give you an example. You know, some of our African brothers that always travel abroad, they will lock up their self in container. You must have had one or two cases like that. What happened when you stock up about 200 people in a container, lock them up for days, going to another unknown country? Human beings actually need oxygen to survive. Each time they breathe in oxygen, what happens? They breathe out carbon dioxide. So they will suck up the whole oxygen within the space. And when you don't have enough oxygen, what happens? It's like something choking you. A person falls down and dies. So we've had a number of them that have died in that container. So you can create such environment within your space. If no oxygen is being brought into that space, you are killing yourself gradually. You see some buildings, they don't have any form of ventilation. The whole place is totally sealed. Architects in the house too. Please, when we are designing, let us try and put in some bit of ventilation in our design. Very, very important. Because we will see a building so magnificent in beauty, adorable in everything. But at the end thing, when you now start doing, maybe you want to apportion them five stars. After going through the building, you'll be surprised that it's only one star the building can be awarded. Even the one star, you are generous. I've been to some building, beautiful, and large sums of money are paid. But when it comes to basic components that is required to ensure the building is running effectively, it is lacking. So for our architects in the house, please, you can take note of that. The facility manager, if you're involved in design, please take note of that so that you don't kill people within your building. Then uh, air conditioning system, we talked about it, which is used to maintain or control an environment within a building for the occupant or for the process being conducted. To maintain the environment, the HVAC system controls some factors. It controls the temperature within this place. When people say, ah, this place is getting hot, what do you do? You own the AC. Humidity, the quality, the quantity of water. A good example of humidity is that when the humidity is too much. When you have too much water content in air, what does it happen? It affects your electronics. It can affect your system also. So a good example, the notable ones you can know, if you check in some offices, their printer, you see one light bulb that is placed there. The essence of that light bulb is to heat your paper and make it dry. Because if it is dry, it can actually enter into your printer and print the quality uh, things you want it to give. But if it is damp and it has absorbed water, each time you slot it in, the printer actually squeezes the paper. So it can lead to your consumable for paper to increase. So relative humidity within your building is required. Then hair distribution. Hair must be effectively distributed within your building. Some people at the extreme of their open office will tell you this place is hot. And people at the other side of the building is telling that place is cold. So your AC is supposed to coordinate those affairs. Then the way the AC is all also have impact on air distribution. And the quality of air, like I said, your AC has a filter. That filter work is to remove dirt from the air. So once dirt are removed, what does it bring? It brings out cleaner air. Air velocity within the space. Air velocity also has effects on how the air travels within the space. Because as the fan in the indoor unit blows the air out, it, they have is what we call a throw. When the air throws, that's why you see some people within the office complain that the AC is not getting to where they are sitting. It is the velocity of air that actually determines. So architects, when you are designing, you can also put into consideration ice attic fan. Most ducted units that you install in the roof I static, they have power to blow air to an extreme of your office. But if you use a low static, you only get just within about one or two meters away from there. So anything beyond three meters, you need to install another AC to get there. If you don't install, half of your building will be hot, then half of your building will be cold. The noise level. Then there are some AC within the building that are noiseless. They don't make noise. 
why some make noise? So when you are choosing, there's a butterfly fan that people always choose. They are blowing, but you will not notice they are working. So you can also take consideration of that. Then the next one, what are the basic components of air conditioning system? There are four basic components of air conditioning system. We have the compressor. From the compressor, we have what they call the evaporator. The compressor is like the heartbeat of the uh, air conditioning system. It's always found inside the outdoor unit. We kept it here so that you guys can get the feel of it. So this is the compressor. So the work of the compressor is that it compresses. During research, some engineers in the past, they discover that there are some fluids. When I mention fluids, it could be gas or water that has the capacity to cool after you must have done some work around it. Those of us that are engineers that have done thermodynamics will understand what I mean. If you heat up gas, it produces uh, heat. You understand? And that heat is what is you are seeing in this red line. So what it compresses, the gas is heated up. It goes into the copper pipes. And after the copper pipe, it enters what they call the condenser coil. The condenser coil is also located in your outdoor units. The condenser coil duty is to discharge the heat that has been created by the compressor. So once it discharges, it is gradually gaining what they call the refrigerating effect. When I say refrigerating effect, I mean cooling effect. So it now passes through this copper after it has discharged those things. So it will not start going into what they call a TSV. Sorry, it goes into what they call a TSV. That's what they call is a thermostatic expansion valve or an expansion valve. The work of the expansion valve is to reduce the pressure. So once you reduce the pressure, you are going to get, you see at this point, this is already converting to blue. The blue indicates cooling. So this cooling that you see in your evaporator is actually in your indoor unit. This is what brings about the cooling within your space. And in this evaporator, they have a fan within. They have a filter also installed within. So those things work together in order to bring the cooling required. And don't forget, each of the evaporator has what they call an aluminum fin. The essence of aluminum fin is to get equally distributed cooling or heating. That is the essence of the aluminum fin. They must not be pressed together. They must be standing in alignment and straight to the extent that you can see the copper within. If you cannot see the copper, that means the aluminum have covered it so much. So it won't be able to do what they call exchange of heat. And that will not bring about cooling you require within the space. So these are the things I've explained to you here. You see the compressor, then it goes into the condenser. From the condenser, it goes to the expansion valve. Then from there, it goes into the evaporator. The evaporator is the required cooling with this space, why the condenser gives out heat. That's why the condenser is always installed outside the building. Then I also give you an example too. If you are building a ground building, you can take off using a split unit. But I will not advise you to be using split unit in a three, four, or five story building unless you have made provision where your outdoor unit is going to be installed. If you go to some building on the Lagos Island, I think this bookshop, uh, bookshop house, that you have the image of a Macaulay around Marina, you see the building defaced because everybody wants to be in charge of their AC. So they install it on the wall of the building. That alone reduces the value of the properties that you want to let out. People, have that beauty that my building, I should not see what is cooling. Did I installed up or installed down? I don't want to see anything hanging on the wall. It in that design actually increases the value of your asset. Please, if you can, please do. But if you can, make do with what you are managing. Please, let's take uh, consider uh, cognizance of the three components, the compressor, 
the condenser, the expansion valve, then the evaporator. Please don't forget. Then other components you can find are the evaporator fan. The evaporator has fan. It is that fan that blows out air. Condenser, condenser fan also is, is sold in the outdoor unit. It blows out air. You have your electrical cable. Your electrical cable actually supply power to the system. The best form of electrical cables in the world is the Nigerian cable. Please don't buy China cable in your property. Okay, your electrical plug too is a component required. If your electrical plug is not okay, there's no way, even if your units are doing fine, it will not work once the electrical plugs are not okay. We have the dryer. When you are going to bigger capacity of units, now you are not talking of dryer, you are talking of side glass, you are talking of temperature sensor. If you, those of us that have been opportune to open the indoor unit, you see something like a small bulb install in front of your evaporator is a sensor that works with your electronic gadget to regulate the cooling required and it also works with the outdoor unit then you have your thermostat the essence of thermostat is to do what is to regulate your temperature then you have capacitor your capacitor is installed alongside your compressor the essence of capacitor is to boost up energy because most compressors have what they call high starting current. Please, when you are doing your power selection too, you want to select generator. When you want to do your calculation, please at no time should you use a running current. It's what they call a starting current. And I will explain to you so that you understand. You remember those of us that have apart my neighbor, those small generator, try your best to own your AC with it or you own your pressing iron, you see the noise the generator will make if it can carry it. Why? There's a high demand of power just within the space of 10 to five seconds. That is what they call starting current. The starting current can be as high as 25 ham for a 15 ham equipment. So when you are selecting, don't use 15 hams to do your calculation. Rather use 25 ham. You calculate all the starting currents. Your light is, does not have starting current. Your fan does not have. But those things that have coil in them has high starting current. So you need to take consideration of those. Then type of air conditioning system. There are different type of air conditioning system within the building. So let me expand this. So we have what they call the non ductable uh, duct, uh, ductable products, then we have the ductable. Sometimes when your ACs are doing their work, the split unit now does not require a duct. The duct is a, meta a metallic component designed, designed to be connected to an indoor unit to move cool air from area where it is not needed to area where it is needed. If you take example of your plumbing system, you know that when water is generated from your tank, you need something to carry the water to where it is needed. So what do we use? We use what they call a pipe. It can be a PVC pipe, it can be a copper pipe or hot water, it can be all kinds of PVA pipes that we have. But what the essence of their duty is to carry water where it is not needed to area where it is needed. For cool air, we don't use pipe, rather we use those uh, galvanized metal. They have different gauges. So you connect it to your central system or your A issue, then you route it to areas where it is needed and you discharge with what they call a diffuser at the point, if you are opportunity to have a central system within your building. Then the ductable, the ductable type, sorry, the non-ductable type, that is where you have your split unit. The ductable type, are uh, the ones I just explained now. They produce the cooling in one place and it is being transferred. And these are common in central system. And when you talk of uh, non-ductable type, they are mainly common in split units where people need individual control. That could also be a concern in a facility. You are running a property where you have close to about uh, 50 clients and each of the clients are staying in three, three bedrooms. You want to run a central air conditioning system for them. 
Because if you run a central air conditioning system for them, it becomes a problem. Somebody will tell you, I've not been in the building for the past one year, and you people are still charging me for usage of power. Why are you charging me? I have my separate meter. Why are you charging me? Because you design central system and somebody must pay for it. So in buildings like that, they design what they call the use split unit, individual control of air conditioning system. Whether you are available or you are not available, so long you energize your assets or your equipment, you pay for the usage. Please take note of that. Then under the split unit, we have what they call the window unit. The window unit is also a very beautiful type of unit. It also requires a dot. But the disadvantage of this one, you have to open the whole wall and put a big buckler behind it. You know, these are our boys. These days, if they don't say you get small money, they go cut the tin, help you drop your AC and follow the entire your house. So the deficiency in the window unit gave rise to the development of split units. So what did they do? They split the cooling part from the heating part and drop the heating part outdoor and drop the cooling part indoor. But you still break the wall, but not as much as a window unit. You see the uh, unit as we go along. You just break a small part. But the problem with this one is that you now need an experienced installer. If you just carry your, then one of my friends recently came from the US. They installed an AC, a new AC they just bought. After they energized the AC, it surprised after some few minutes, the AC worked. After about one or two hours, the AC dropped. What causes it? The person that was tying the copper pipe to the outdoor unit did not do a proper job. So most of the refrigerant gas leaked away from the system. So you must be careful. Assuming it was a window unit, you will never discuss such problem with it. So split units, you must get an experienced person to do your installation. Then you have the floor mounted, then you have the wall mounted. When you say floor mounted, this is the design that you see in most Nigerian banks. You see some one AC as tall as your head. You discharge cooling at the top and return all the air just beneath it. Then you have the wall mounted. The wall mounted are those ones they put on the wall. You see them mounted on the wall, but this design is fading away. So most people do not use this type of wall, but some old building or high rise building, you see, see them functioning. Then we also have what they call the ceiling mounted unit. The ceiling mounted unit are units that are installed in the ceiling. They discharge downward. Then under that uh, ceiling mounted unit, you have this other equipment type. They have the exposed type. They have the hidden. When you say exposed type, is the one that you cannot do without you installing it. Maybe areas where you see the exposed type is that when they want to install it, they discover that the head room is not sufficient to hold the equipment. So they have no choice than to expose it. Then the hidden away type is mainly common in hotels. When you are coming into the hotel, you see the, a drop down at the hotel and a wire mesh at one corner of the thing before it gets to the ceiling. So that is the only way it can be installed. Then you have the case type. The case type is also a ceiling type. You can also mount it in the, in the ceiling. They call it case type. Then this double type, uh, you have the package air conditioning units. The package units, if you go, if those if you have opportunity of going to Shell Building in Marina, you see this type of unit installed. They are bigger than the normal small ones they have. When we say package, all the four components I mentioned above are within one particular component. So they create, it's still installed in a building, but what they not did was to create a discharge for all air outside the building. Then the cool air supplies the building. Then this other one is the central plant. The central plant is where you have your chillers, you have your uh, absorption chillers and the rest. Then roof standing package units. See, all these components I mentioned, it depends on your building type and the budget of your clients when you are choosing. And most facility managers or property managers, sometimes they reach what has been installed. So, you don't have any power to change or alter what has been used, but you have a limited power. When you see that a particular unit is a problem to you, you can mark out a plan. 
once the unit is destroyed or is damaged, you can mark out a plan for total replacement and put the required equipment in place. So you can read up all this other one itself. Under this uh, floor mounted standing type package, you have the air cool type, the water cool type. When you say air cool type, the air within the environment is what is cooling the evaporator. Then if water is the one cooling it, they call it the water cool type. Then they have the direct expansion system. This also fall within that uh, uh, design unit that I've mentioned earlier. So we have the chilling, chill water system. Then we have the vapor assumption. Then we have the vapor compression units. So please do not take them into details. Your function is to understand how the unit work. I'm only giving you different type of AC you could find in a building, but all have similar, similar maintenance plan. Then this is the window type I talked about. You see how big it is. So this area is the cooling and this is the return air. So in order to define the return air, you can actually use a small paper. Once you put a small paper within this place, you discover that this part is actually sucking. So anywhere you see the unit suck, that is where the filters are always installed. Once you remove this front grill, you are going to see the filter installed here. Then this is the supply. The supply is when the cool air has been generated. This is what gives the air, the cool air into the space. So you have a control unit, the electronics that you can read to check the temperature, sometimes check what is happening within your AC. And this back part is where the discharge of air is so it can also discharge it can also suck air within the environment to cool itself so i also listed areas where you can find this i can also call it student type of ac some student can afford this and some student can also afford the other expensive ones depending on the size of your pocket the school higher institutions or hotels and hostels uh, residential apartment and some office can also be discovered. This is the split unit I talked about now. You see, it, they removed the indoor and the outdoor unit. You can see the way they have installed it. The outdoor unit is here. Please, at no time, should you install your outdoor unit too close to the wall, you must give enough space behind it. The essence of the space is for it to suck air, to cool the compressor. If you install it too close to the wall, they are doing damage to your compressor. And ACs are very, very expensive now. So you need to give it a very thorough plan, maintenance, so that you ensure the duration and expand and uh, increasing the lifespan of the unit. Then you can also find this in a various of, this is the most common of all air conditioning system. Then you see it in office, some higher institution also have it and the rest. Then the fancy type. Then you might have a client that will tell you, I don't need split, I don't need window, I need something off my ceiling. Then you can give them something similar to this. If they have enough headroom, and the, the, head, the problem with this is uh, the drain. Every KSS unit has a pump that pump water from a lower area to a higher area. This back is the a return and supply refrigerant that is bringing the cool and taking the hot refrigerant gas out. And at the top here is the discharge. So there's always a pump installed here. And the enemy of air conditioning system in Nigeria has been power. If your power is poor, it can actually affect that pump. And if it affects the pump, each time the pump works, it sweat. And there's a tray that the pump needs to suck water from constantly to ensure that no water drop in your building. But if the pump is destroyed, it affects your, your, your ceiling, it affects your installation, or water can even drop on people's head when they are washing their favorite masks and the women washing African masks. Then you have the doctor type. This is the doctor type. Why people would prefer to use this? Most of the doctor type have high static uh, velocity. For their fan. The fan can throw to far distance. So when you want to kick one or two of these, you can actually use this type of unit. But you must also consider budget of your clients Then consider whether it meets the aesthetics required within your space.
So we'll go to the next one. So these are fan core units. These are mainly used in hotels. You see, this is a more simplified action. So if you go to some hotel, you see something like this in the ceiling. This is the discharge and the back is sucking, the, is blowing out the hot air. And this is blowing out the cool air. So all the sweat within the AC is actually falling on the tray. And the tray always have a pipe that you connect in it. That pipe is to take all the water that is dropping and they follow through your plumbing line out of the building. They are more effective than the pump. So they don't rely on the use of pump for it. This also work in a similar way with this, but the, the advantage of this is that they have high static uh, fan. It can blow to a far distance within your space. Then the package units. When, you, when I mentioned shell the other time, these are the units I was mentioning. You see that the units are together. It could also be like this. It could also be like this. So you see the cool air, which is marked by blue line, it's actually separated from the unit. Why the altar is also separated from the unit. You see the direction to which they are moving. This one is, is moving towards, there's a dock that will be connected here. This one is going to areas where the cooling is required. Why this one is going out to where the hot air is also required because the hot air is not needed within the space. It's blowing the hot air outward. So the design, your design taste, or budget actually determine which of the components you might need. Then if you have that money, and you know you are going to do, you have a very big space, maybe out of the madame in the house now, better money don't touch us. After our election, where we go represent for Abuja, money don't touch So We want to expand and build a very big shopping mall. Most of, if we have the luxury, we can go for a chiller system. The beauty of a chiller system is that it can handle cooling for a large space. You don't need any other unit except the chiller with some ducted units with air handling units pumping the cool air within space. Areas this might be needed might be areas like shop rides, areas like a stadium, a, uh, a museum. And not Nigerian, because I've been to a museum here in Lagos, so I'm not talking of that kind of, I'm talking of big museums, those type you see in Europe. Uh, we talk of a theater, National Art Theater, where you have more than 500 people viewing a program at the same time. You need it in a church. So bigger church also, also have chillers. And big hall for weddings, if you can afford it, you go for it. But the major problem with this is that the, most of them work with three phase. And our power supply does not give us complete three phase. So it leaves us at the mercy of using your diesel generator. So most building in Nigeria started scrapping the use of chiller and going for other choice that will reduce their budget. Because if your budget is higher, it's going to impact on your profit for the year. You are going to you are making let's say 200 billion as in a year and you are using close to about 120 million to service all the equipment within your building how much is left to pay salary how much is left to take care of other things within the building what, what profit are you going to get and if you have company that has shareholders they will see that as a bad market so your work as facility manager and property manager is to further reduce budget and in reducing budget, you put out a plan maintenance plan so that your equipment will go down. And if you are buying equipment, buy equipment that are energy efficient. Energy efficient, that is a topic of its own. So in AC, they have what they call EER, energy efficiency ratio. Energy efficiency, the higher the value, the more effective the equipment is. That means you are using less electrical power to give us maximum output. Please take it as that. Let me drop it from there. Then this is a chiller system. If you check the one beside it, this is a water cool system. It's a chiller system. These are cooled by the air within the environment. You see that they have their fan installed at the top. The water cool chiller does not have fan because what cools it is what 
the water. That's why you see water here. Water goes in through a particular point to take out the heat and the cool air goes out. This work exactly like all those Lister generators. All those ones they call those Indian generators. Those ones you will why, 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 why before it starts. So they work exactly like this. Don't forget, in your studies, air and water are the two major components that cools. That cools. So this is another form of air conditioning system. My company, the company I worked for some years back, actually delivered this to BAT parts in Ibadan. And they bought two of them. They are very, very expensive. When they bought this equipment, they are between a hundred million one. They bought it for a purpose. They wanted they, they wanted to automate all their factories. And all their factories have equipment that generate enough uh, heat. So with this chiller, the temperature within the unit will be brought low and the equipment will work effectively. So then we have what they call the VRF system. The VRF system capitalizes on the disadvantages of space. You know, when I show you the chiller, you see how massive they are. They occupy a lot of space. But for a VRF system, it has the capacity of a reduced space, yet give maximum cooling. Most of them also work on direct uh, uh, inverters by uh, inverters compressor, the inverter driven. And they also have the capacity to work with various kind of indoor units. Then the way they you see the way they are powered here, yeah? you see a central system, then you see all the units directed. So they also have the capacity to also produce heat in a particular area, and they can also produce cooling. Why they call it variable refrigerant flow? What causes effective cooling within the system is the flow of your refrigerant. So the other ones we have been talking about all things have constant flow of refrigerant. So it cannot be fully regulated. So with the VRS system, when you regulate this, it reduces the energy consumed by your compressor. I believe I'm making sense. Those of us that are engineers will understand more. But take note, your VRS save more energy than your chiller system. Then we also have other type of uh, HVAC system not listed in this presentation, but are used in various sectors. Have you ever asked yourself what type of AC are used in a submarine? Submarine is a ship that can, that can go deep into the waters and can also surface on the water, yet it has some form of cooling within it. What kind of AC is used in ships that travels and carry all those containers? Those kind of uh, ACs are designed differently because the environment within the sea level, because of salt, corrosion is higher. So you need to prevent the corrosion. So you, there are some kind of treatment that is given to the outdoor unit to make them resistant to the harsh condition they are being exposed. What kind of air conditioning system do we see in our air in our airplane? You fly from here to London, you fly from here to Abuja and Potako. Have you ever wondered what kind of AC is being used within the, uh, the plane? Then using rocket, people travel to space. You see those astronauts, what kind of AC is being used? There are other forms but not mentioned but beyond the scope of this. But once you find yourself within this, every air conditioning system also follow those basic principles I pointed out to you. Then how do we maintain air, all these air conditioning systems? Most of the most of the AC listed above have similar basic components, which I've mentioned before, compressor, condenser coil, expansion valve, then the evaporator. So this is what a one of the many type of compressor, this is what they look like. They have something like a rotor inside or a coil. So once you energize them, what happens? They, they increase, this thing rotate, or some just move around. As they are moving around, they are increasing the speed of the refrigerant. And as, that, as it's doing that, it's compressing and generating heat. The essence of the black color is to allow it to discharge heat generated with day. 
So this is our co uh, compressor. It is not, I don't know if you'll be tested all this, but for this lesson, I don't think you'll be tested. Just know this is how a compressor look. You see where the cold, the hot air is going out. You see the arrow pointing out, connected, and this is where the cool air is coming in. Those who are coming from the evaporator are going, going into the system to be compressed and be pumped out again. So there are different types of compressor. So I will not dwell too much on all this because it will be much for you. There are technical terms. So just understand we have compressor and all compressor work similarly. The essence of compressor is to heat up, to compress the refrigerant gas. And if you compress the refrigerant gas, the next stage is to be sent into the condenser. So you can read all this one up. So let me not bug you much about that. Then why compressor goes bad? No refrigerant charge. If your compressor does not have require the refrigerant it can go bad. It's just like human beings not having enough blood within their system. Poor ventilation. You install your AC where there's no proper ventilation for the outdoor unit. The, there's a building along body lawn I checked. The outdoor unit was actually installed and there's a wall just within about, uh, let's say 500 cm, uh, I said 500 cm, uh, 50 cm away from the wall. So most of the heat are hitting the wall and coming back to the AC. So most time the AC will shut down. Block suction line. One of the copper that takes the gas around, once it is blocked, the compressor will not be able to compress and send the refrigerant gas to the next stage for cooling. Then poor power supply. Nigeria fall along this group. We don't have good power. Most of us are powering our buildings, our facility with inverters or other alternatives like using generator and the rest. The poor or bad installation. Sometimes you have everything okay, you bought the right equipment, bought the right thing, but you gave it to the poor installer because there's no money. Please don't cut, don't cut costs when you want to get quality. Quality will laugh at you when your equipment start misbehaving. The factory problem could also be a problem. So when you are buying equipment, I will ask you to always buy equipment that are warranty based. Don't go and buy because they are cheaper. Because you might be lucky to get the good ones, but if you get the bad one, what happens to the equipment? You can't go back, you can't refund it, you have to buy another equipment. Then back capacitor. Sometimes when the system goes down, it is the capacitor. We need the system that might have it. So you need to buy the, uh, uh, a capacitant uh, measuring device to be able to measure the capacitor. So once you buy that device, you will be able to measure it. If a capacitor is measured in 50 microfarad, and after you notice that the, uh, the capacitor is not working properly, you measure it, you will not discover that it is giving 10 microfarad in reading. Know that that capacitor is gone. So you go to the market, buy the same capacity or capacitor and bring it back and install and your unit will be off and running. Then run pipe size. Be careful when you buy uh, your copper pipe size. Every manual comes with the right size of copper that goes with your unit. So if you follow it concurrently to work on well, your installer can also handle this on site. Then solution to the problem. Ensure the refrigerant is within required standard. Provide good ventilation that you have then. Clear suction line. Ensure, ensure good power supply on a store and AVS. If you know you have big problem, one of the places we went to the local airport, all their units are always going bad. And the former company that was handling this were constantly changing compressor. And the compressor were far, far more expensive, but they need to cool people moving in, passengers that are going through. So when we bought AVS, that AVS actually solved that problem. Please be careful, they are wrong, they are fake AVS in the market and the original type. So when you want to buy, they are, we have the digital and the manual type. Though my, one of my suppliers told me the digital type are very okay, some are tested and very okay. So you might want to go for a good supplier to give you quality things to save the life of your system. So 
it regulates the voltage. Then if the voltage is small and it's not going to be healthy for your equipment, the uh, the uh, the component actually cut off our supply to your unit to save the life. So when the power is within range, our standard, then it supply power to your equipment and your equipment start running. Then uh, we have poor, uh, good installation, as I against poor installation. Ensure your product has warranty. Install good capacitor, then use the right pipe size. Then this is your condenser. That is how your condenser looks like. Most of us may not have seen the inside of your condenser. I've talked about this. Then I've talked about fan that you have. This fan actually, you see the way it's designed. It's actually take air from outside or around the equipment, blows it through it. And you see where your compressor is installed. This is your capacitor. And you have your electrical equipment installed here. So all your cables are actually routed beside this equipment up here, give you power. You know, when you put on your switch from inside, you energize the power here, and the AC does not start immediately. Reason is that every compressor have oil. The oil always act like the palm oil we have in the house. When you leave palm oil in the cold environment, what happens? It's turned to solid. So when you own it, it, the electrical energy is being converted to heating energy. So those oil is actually melted. So once it is melted to the required standard, your unit just pick up and start working. So also when you want to notice if your AC is not working well, go around. Once you see oil discharge around your unit, know that the refrigerant gas has escaped. There's no way refrigerant will escape without oil around that particular point it discharge. Please take note. And every refrigerant have their own it, uh, they have their own oil. You have R22 has its own oil. R410 has its own oil. R403 has its own oil. R32, that is one of the newest refrigerants, has their own oil. Please do not mix the refrigerant. That's why sometimes you need an experienced person on site or you engage the experience of a qualified company to run or do your maintenance. So common problems with your condenser coil. Block coil. What blocks coil? Dust from the air. You install your equipment where there is too much dust. Each time it's working, it's always sucking dust. And within time, it's blocked. So the solution is to buy what they call a pressure washing machine. And I believe most of us have seen a washer, uh, pressure washing machine. If you have not seen one, we have similar one used for your car. You know, when you stay in an environment where your radiator is always blocked or it's overheating, They'll tell your guy, now your radiator don't block, so you need to wash them. So once your mechanic tells you that, you know that the core, the evaporate, the radiator is blocked. Similar things happen in your AC. So once it's blocked, you need a pressure washing machine to actually pump out the debt. And when you are doing your maintenance, it's one of the requirements for your maintenance to be done. You must wash the outdoor units to make it look new. Then bend copper pin. I, I told you in the, in let me go back to this. This thing you look that look like silver, they're actually aluminum thin. If there are too many bends there, so your fan won't be able to get the required air in to cool. And if this thing does not get cool and the environment does not look cool, it affects what? Your compressor. If your compressor has some protective mechanism to shut down, if it does not have, it will work till it breaks down. And once it breaks down, you need to go and replace your compressor. And compressor is about 40 to 50% expensive than, uh, uh, 50% uh, uh, you spend about 50% of the cost of your units to buy just a compressor for replacement. Then when you talk about replacement, don't forget the installer is going to take his money. They are going to pay for transport. So the best bet to save your equipment is to buy a protective uh, equipment. Then poor installation can also affect, you know, I mentioned that you put your AC outdoor unit in environments where you don't have enough space in front. 
enough space behind so your compressor can actually have issue then sometimes your com your condenser can, can come with leaked coil the coil is actually leaking you did not know each time you put gas it leaks down each time you put gas it leaks down your technician keep putting gas but how long are you going to do this the first thing you need to do identify where the leakage is if you identify if there's still gas in the system you can do what they call the pump down your technician should be able to do that once it pump down then you lock up you lock up at the just by the side of the uh, the nozzle once you lock up you remove your copper pipe then you start tracing the leak and how to get leak at all they have the equipment gas leaking equipment that you can use then the cheapest form of uh, detection of leakage is to use soap water the same thing is being applied for those that are pumping tire once your tire is leak you see your condo, uh, your mechanic will buy what soap put it inside water and start pouring around any possible place that is leaking it brings it all out so uh those are the solution there clear block ensure the fin are not bent good installation then block any leakage then your expansion valve this is how it looks like the essence of the expansion valve is to reduce pressure coming from the refrigerant gas and it's always between the condenser coil and the evaporator it is very important that your installation is done well why this is installed if your installation is not done well you see that the copper pipes are clean this is actually zoomed this is how it looks like you see these things you are seeing they are very thin when you do your installation and you have a lot of dead within debt within your uh, system those there can actually block it and if they block it it will affect every component of the equipment the equipment will not bring out the required cooling so poor installation, poor phase change from compressor, then fake TSV. There are a lot of fake things in the market that you need to take cognizance of. All these things I'm explaining to you, your HR with yourself need to employ a good hand in managing your equipment or give it to a company that have more experience. Then solution, good installation, proper phase change from compressor. When I talk about phase change, I'm talking the compressor, Sometimes the refrigerant can be in liquid state. Then when it is being compressed, it turns into the gaseous state. So the evaporator actually handles that process at that point. So it is important you buy the real one. Then the next one is your evaporator. The evaporator comes in two ways. When you are having a bigger system in the chiller system, you have the evaporator looking like this. Then the split unit, the ones you have in your homes, our hotels and the rest, that is how they look like. So they also have aluminum thing. They also have copper within it. So once the, the cold air come into it, the fan within the system blows the, hot, the air through this part, thereby resulting in cooling. It also have a small tray underneath. That small tray actually collect any droplets of water and take it out of the building. So common problem, block coil. If the coils are blocked, maybe you've not maintained for two, three years. Just each time you sweep in your house, the dust are being uh, 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 rise up and it sucked it. With time, it could block it. Your filter could also be blocked. Low refrigerant. If there are low refrigerant being used back, the equipment will not be the required cooling within the space. Forty fan, even if the cooling uh, is working well, you discover the fan that is supposed to blow the air and not blow the air out to you are not working as required. Then you need to look at your system. Oh, sorry. Uh, evaporator. Sorry for that. Then factory error. Sometimes there are some equipment that comes with error direct from the factory. So you need to look at it. So what are the solutions? These are the solution. Clean or pressure wash the coil. Once you notice that the equipment is not being washed, your technician need to pump down, uninstall the indoor unit and take it out to pressure wash it, dry it and bring it back. Then open up uh, your nozzle behind, beside it 
then you pump back, then on. Ensure required refrigerant is within the unit. Ensure the fan is working as required. The fan must work well. It must not wobble while working. It must work without producing noise. Then that is fine. Seal off the leaking gas. Then make use of your warranty if there are factory errors. Then you talk of filter. I've said the essence of filter is to remove dirt and improve quality of uh, quality of uh, air within your space. So this is how your typical filter look like. In a small, bigger unit, this is how the filter look like. And there are different type of filter. We have what they call the disposable filter. They have what they call the washable filter. And they have what they call the hyper filter. The disposable type is when it is dirty, you don't do, you dispose. The washable type is that we can manage it, but they are not efficient. Then when you talk about hyperfilter, this is the type of filter used in hospitals. They clean air to about 99.9% .9 clean. They are very expensive, but they will give you a more cleaner air. Then these are the basic filter you have in your uh, residential split units. So this one, you can actually do the maintenance yourself. Once you remove the upper lid from your indoor unit, you can take the filter outside, wash it, dry it, then return it back. So block filters, if you have not maintained your equipment for a long time, the filter could also be blocked. Cold installed filter could also affect low quality filter. There are some filters that are locally made, but they don't require, they don't remove uh, air, dirt in air as required. It's not just installing filter. The question is, is the filter removing dirt in air? So you need to take cognizance of that. There are some companies that spend so much to measure the quality of air within their space. They want to know what they are breathing. If you don't measure, you see that uh, microorganism fester in an environment that is dirty. And if it's dirty, your staff takes it in. It definitely, your HMO bills will keep going up because people will start complaining of similar uh, disease, you understand? So what are the solution? Clean filter, install filter properly or state, stated in your, oh, that is operational uh, maintenance manual. Use the recommended filter. Then water leakage. In SC, you have a lot of water leakage, then drain issue. Where does water leakage comes out from? On maintain equipment for a long time. Once the units are blocked, once the units are blocked, they start forming ice on the equipment. And that can also affect what is happening. Drain can also be an issue. When you say drain, drain is where the, I know I told you uh, every AC has a tray where water is being collected. And if that is not properly done, it affects water dropping back into your building. It could also lead to growth of mold in your building. Mold, might, you might not know the effect of mold. Mold are like microorganisms that actually discharge harmful gases into air. And when you breathe it in, has that effect on your health. So every environment you maintain must be 100% clean. So what are the structural defects in some cases? It may result in smell. Sometimes when you install your drain and the discharge point, there's what they call U-trap. If the U-trap is not properly installed, water smell from outside, follow that same drain line into the office. So you need to take care of the U-trap installed alongside. Then every drain must have a discharge. If you are using a VRS system and many units are connected together, please tell your, uh, your installer or your plumber to ensure that after about two to three meters away from the units, you can install what they call air vents. If air is trapped inside your unit, it can lead to backflow of water. I've experienced it in a, in a, unit, in a building where water was dropping as if it was raining inside the building. 
we discovered they were, all the units were connected together. There was no air vent. Please take note of that. Growth of eye gate. Once, you know, uh, our scientists, they say they want to go to Mars. And what are they going to do, do in Mars to discover if there's any life form? And what are they looking for? They are looking for water. Why am I bringing this example? Anywhere there's water, there's possibility of a microorganism or bacteria growing in that place. So once your unit is dripping water, is giving room for microorganisms to grow. And once microorganisms grow, they grow at what they call geometric progression. They don't grow in arithmetic progression. And if they multiply too much in a place, you see people entering a building, they are sneezing. <sighs> Not one person, the same number of people entering a place, they are sneezing. There's something wrong with that building. So there's a topic they call the sick building syndrome that you might want to know as facility or property managers. Then what are the solutions? Good installation, proper installation of drain line. They install drain exit away from gutter. Don't install, maybe in central system, your drain line is pointing direct into gutter and there's no utra. So the smell follow the drain back into your building. Ah, it's on condenser coil and evaporator coil. This is also common issue with most of our units. You see ice forming on it. This one is lack of maintenance or sometimes low refrigerants can cost it. So I will give you a good and a clearer example. This unit is designed to take a particular quantity of cool air away from itself. But along the way, there's a blockage. That blockage does not allow that to go out. And each time there's a blockage, what happens? The place, the cooling that was maybe 10 degrees, will now start reducing to maybe 8, 6, 5, 2, minus. Once it start getting all to those minus, what happens to water? Water freezes at what? Zero degree centigrade. So water start forming on top of your evaporator coil or your filters. So you need to take care of it. The only solution is for you to do your proper maintenance to clear it. For cooling, it can lead to compressor failure because if the compressor is not getting the required refrigerant back to the required temperature, then the compressor will shut down. So it has direct impact on your outdoor unit. Efficiency of the AC might be affected because what's supposed to blow out, a debt is blocking it. It's not allowing it to go out. So people will be complaining, why is this place hot and the AC is working? only for you to open and discover there's ice forming on top of your evaporator coil. So you might need to do your maintenance well. Solution, clean block surface with a pressure pump. Place your AC on PPM. Do constant PPM plan for yourself. Install AC in clean environment. Then remove every source of blockage. Parkat, are we going to have break or should I just continue to the end? Okay, it's almost seven. Continue, sir. sir. Yes. It's almost seven. Yes. Okay, there's no need. Let's just round up. Uh, this is capacitor. I have to write. Uh, capa the essence of capacitor. I explain running correct and starting correct. The essence of capacitor that the power we have sometimes cannot start up the compressor. So most capacitors store charges. They store charges. So those charges, when you power on, the charges coming from your power and that of the compressor or add to starting up your compressor. So sometimes your technician can be wise enough if your system is down, they will tell you it is the compressor that is having fault. But in actual fact, it is your capacitor. So those of ones that are wiser, they will play you. You will give them money for, for replacement of compressor while the problem is capacitor. You understand? So you need to be wise enough to be able to differentiate it. You need to ask the right question. When they, and it's shut down, tell them to do report. Check their report, confirm very well. If you have a measuring device, bring out the capacitor, tell him to measure the capacitor in your present. Check, if you check on this capacitor, there's something that will be written in UF. Written here, oh, there are too many blockages here. 
So there's a name written it. Once you see microfad around this, the number before the microfad is actually the value for the uh, the actually the value. I think this is it here. Is forty five the five microfad? This should be the value here, the capacitor rating. So once you want to go to the market, this is what you will buy. Then. Okay, it has it can power your fan, then it can also power your compressor. They have the one for fan. That's why you have 45 to 5 microfarad. So it's a double in one capacitor. Then I've explained a, I've explained how it works. That is the story there. Then the problem for capacitor, poor power supply. Poor power supply will not make them function well. The fake capacitor, there are some fake capacitor, low standard that are also in the market. Then undersized capacitor, if your capacitor is to have 50 microfarad and you are putting 30 microfarad, you are doing more harm to your compressor. So you buy the required size. Solution, use a multimeter and check for capacitor. Click, click sound every time when the central unit AC comes on. AC motor makes a humming sound. The air condition unit has trouble starting, but keep turning on. Okay, these are part of it. Virtual sign. Sometimes some solution for the capacitor. Once you see the capac capacitor is swollen, it has a problem. So it needs to be replaced. Then what are the things you look out for when buying an age bar system? So you are a facility manager, a property manager. They tell you, okay, we need AC for one of our floor or one of our clients need to replace the AC. So what are the things you look at? Brand of your air conditioning system, very important. Type of refrigerant use, warranty period on the product, energy efficiency ratio. Like I said, the energy efficiency ratio should be high. If you have energy efficiency ratio between three and above, they should be fine. So it can be as high as 10, 11, or 12 on bigger units. Then aesthetic of your design also determine the kind of AC you want, your budget. Purpose of the HVAC system, uh, what do you need it for? Is it for a big hall? If it's for an individual, so it determines. Then, okay, maintenance. What kind of maintenance plan will you require? Then is HVAC part available? Is the HVAC system part available in the market? Why most killers are abandoned is that? They don't have parts in the market. And the exchange, and nothing is being produced in Nigeria, the exchange rates have direct impact on most of the parts. Then when you go to some big, you, bigger companies, when they want to change parts, you see the, the manufacturer telling you to give them the part number. Every component in that chiller has what they call a part number. That part number is actually sent to the department where the chillers are produced to produce similar if they don't have any stock of that particular material. Please take notes. Then what are the uh, what are the possible cause of HVAC system failure in a facility? Poor installation. All your AC when you come when you are doing your audit, you see this. You see that the ACs are installed wrongly. Where they are supposed to put outdoor unit, that is not where you put. Where it's supposed to put indoor, that is not where. Poor design from the beginning. The ACs are poorly designed. And that one is affecting the headroom. When you are walking your room, you will look as if your ceiling wants to hit your head. Poor HVAC system. You use the wrong HVAC system for the right building. Just imagine somebody say they should put a split unit in stadium. How many split units are you going to put in the stadium to put the entire stadium? That does not make sense. Then sometimes you need to work. Some issue could be oversized. When you oversize your AC design, it has direct impact on your energy consumption. Then when you are that design, it has direct impact on comfort of the building. Please take note. Not taking into consideration the actual cooling load. When you need to design in a place, most especially a stadium and the rest, you need to know the actual cooling required for the space. There are software you can use to do that, and there's a rule of thumb you can also use to do that. So you can use 0 0.18 per kilowatts per meter square. 
So those of us writing 0 0.18 per meter square, 0 0.18 0 .18 kilowatts per meter square. If you know the area of your space to be 10, 10 meters square, when you measure it, maybe it's about a five by two. So if it is five by two, so what you need to do, you just do 0 0.18 multiplied by 10. So what capacity would that give you? 1.8 kilowatts. So I can always give, once I see a building, I can vary it. Like I said, it's a rule of thumb. And every rule of thumb does not take into consideration what it needs to be cooled. The building in Lagos is different from building in Medjugorje. Please take note. Don't use the design in Lagos for the design in Abuja or Portacourt. They might be the same building with the same number of people, but the environmental condition of the building varies. So that's why sometimes you explore experts to do what they call a cooling load before you now decide. And the type of system you choose also has direct impact on your budget or comfort of the building. No redundant HVAC system in the server room. Sometimes you see that your server rooms are getting hot, the units are shutting down, Normally, if your server room need about 50 kilowatts of cooling, you need to over design with, uh, by 25%. You can do 75 cooling. You leave one particular equipment as the standby in case one of those equipment shut down, you put this in on. Because if it shut down and the heat is getting too much, you can damage your equipment and equipment are expensive to replace. For duct installation, for central system, your duct installation can be making noise or water is dropping from meat or you left holes for where rats can actually follow in. Then when the rat finally dies within the unit, smell from that rat can be distributed within the office. For maintenance culture, you have a very good HVAC system, but if you have poor maintenance culture, you are going to increase the cost of maintenance in the future. Purpose of the design, sometimes the owner of the building does not know why he needs a particular AC. He just buy AC after five years, he abandoned it, he went to buy split units. First of all, before you design, know the purpose. Then no part available. Before you buy, also know that you have parts in the market. When it comes to car, people will tell you in Lagos, it is Toyota car. You can buy their part at any point. Use similar idea for your AC. Don't go and buy AC that has funny name. And when you go to the market, they will tell you, sir, this part is not there available. That means the whole of your system is condemned. You have to buy another one. Then, not considering power issues. When you don't consider power issues, it's also a problem. Then, if you want to buy, always consider if your design is within range. There's option for one phase. There's option for three phase. Please, I will advise you, if you have option for the same capacity, that you are choosing, go for one phase. One phase is always available in Nigeria. Three phase is never available. Because if you use three phase, that means you have to run your generator to power your unit. Please, you need to consider all these factors I'm mentioning to you. The conditional, conditioning assessment stroke audit of HVAC system, two procedure, preliminary audit and detail audit. So I've listed some things for you to do when you enter a building. First, you must ask, I'm giving you a summary now. When you enter the building or you are taking over a property, you must ask for when the units were first installed, take the name of the manufacturer, take the maintenance record of the equipment and see whether they are following good maintenance culture. Then after you have done that, then query your technician or another company you wish to use for your maintenance let them do a report of the equipment itself, add it and do a detailed report and give to your, the owner of the property or the asset owner or your landlord or your agent that is in charge of the property. Do that detailed report. Then as you are doing your conditional assessment, don't just do and state problems to know. You must also give solution. If you have budget for the cost to replace or repair, please also include it. If the client now said, I don't have money, in the future, you have removed yourself from any blame that will come on this. So I will rush up now. It's already 
seven. I guess we are getting tired now. So you can read up all this one. I've explained it in brief. What you need for your conditional assessment action taking, considering a list of energy observation opportunity, flexibility needed for details, activating the detail of the tax. So they are very simple. What I've just told you now is what you need to do. Know where the unit was installed, know the name of the manufacturer, get the manner of the equipment, check if the equipment has a maintenance record, know uh, call in a company or an experienced person to do the condition of the equipment before they take them over, then do a detailed report and submit to your owner. The step required for carrying out an audit, gathering, building, design, data, document for information, visit site, location for the audit, definition of profitability solution and action, then reporting. All this as a summary of what I have just explained to you. After you've done your condition assessment, you must do what they call reporting. Then checklist for HVAC equipment. Then when you have finally done this, in order, one of the solutions is for you to do what they call regular schedule maintenance tax. If your technician is going around, what are the things they must check to say that this unit is working well? They must check the condition, the cooling required for the unit. They must check if there's drain issue. They must check if the filters have been washed. They must check if the unit temperature is working as required. Check the thermostat if the, the battery is working well. Check if the refrigerant is not being leaked into the space. Check the installation capacity. Check and do all your records. Check whether there's rats eating up something within your cables. Check, check, check. These things I've mentioned are physical check. Those that are good, fine. Those that are best, fine. And those you need to make provision for, for the ones that are bad. If it is bad, then you put a corrective plan to correct them. So these are examples of what you might need to check for for your guys to do. So you can do a checklist for them every day where they can see from Monday to Saturday or most of the equipment. Then they can do a footnote just beside note. Anyone that is having issue on the floor, they can actually do a more detailed report. Right. Then plant preventive maintenance, we've talked about this off, but it's worthy of mentioning here. I've generated another one. Plant preventive maintenance allow you to substantially reduce reactive maintenance and retain your building and asset at a desired level of quality. So we talked about this before. The essence of that is to ensure that the unit is working as if it is new. These are the maintenance strategies that you might need. Preventive maintenance, the strategies you require for them. Then corrective maintenance, the strategy you also require for them. Then what you might also do, your maintenance schedule. You see what this man did. This is for a general thing, but you can also do for your AC. So your equipment, you list the name. The, what are the maintenance tasks? Prepared by who? Instead of prepared by who, action, you can actually create a position for action by who. If it is your technician, you list it there. If it is your vendor, you list it there. Then one other thing I also do in my site is to put their phone number. If you are portion to put their email, please do. Then put the time spent when they are doing their maintenance. Then you can also do this. We have 52 weeks in a year. You can carve out 52 weeks in a year. Then don't forget maintenance. There are some you need to do every day. There are some you need to do every week. There are some that are monthly. There are some that are by, you do twice in a month. There are some that you do quarterly, there are some you do by annual, and there are some you do once in a year. So you use your color code to indicate the frequency of uh, this and put a date to where it will be done. So if you have done your maintenance, maybe January 1st, and you are doing quarterly maintenance, you start counting your quarterly, then you put another mark for that. Then after that, you do another mark somewhere. You do another mark until you get it done throughout the whole year. And as you are doing this, you can also use this to do your planning and your budget. If you are going to do your maintenance about four times in a year, so you now give a quotation based on the four times. Please take note of that. Then how do heat get into space? This are Jara I am giving to you. Heat gets into space from different sources. 
you see it just beneath. Human generates heat, heat gets into the electrical equipment, lighting system, give heat, solar heat gain. When sun rises, where you store your gas, your glass, heat comes through it there. Then the solution is to put what? To put your, what do they call it? Window blind to trap the heat within that place. Your location of your building can also be a problem. Activities carried out within the space. Then all installation tips. Before you put anything on the wall, you must check the strength, proper spacing between the wall and AC, appropriate insulation eye for the ground, correct tint angle for indoor unit, correct location for outdoor unit. All this, I believe you can read on your own. Then you see some professional installation being done. You see everything is perfectly straight. You see what this man is doing, perfectly done using his PPE while maintaining. So you need to buy PPE for your, guy, for your guys. PPE you might need, your helmet, your reflective jacket, safety shoe, hand glove, hair mask, or eye goggle for your guys so that nothing will flash into their eye and or no noise will affect them. You understand that noise part when you are working with the chiller system. Then you see how this one is also installed very perfect and the electrical cables are well aligned. Then this is a, this will be a shopping mall. You see what is happening here. This is where everybody wants to have their AC. You see everybody decide to have some installers, uh, property owners, sometimes they install their AC this way. Do you understand? It might not be a good design, but the beauty is that it is on top of the roof. So nobody sees it except you or your technician. Then this is one of the units I also deliver to one of our clients. So if it must be a chiller system, ensure that there's a plinth, which is the base. Then the base will have a vibrating pad. You don't drop chiller direct on the floor. There must be a vibrating pad. The essence of vibrating pad is that shock. Uh, the vibration of these things should be absorbed by the vibrating pad, not transmitted to the building or the structure where it is being installed. Then this is a VRS system. This one, you can actually install them like this because they have up discharge of cooling. And you see how they are, uh, they are copper pipes are well arranged. Please don't forget, when you do your installation like this, let your technician do tagging so that they will know the copper pipe that is associated with the outdoor unit. So that uh, somebody living in uh, second floor is having issues. You went for maintenance. You now said that, sir, we have to work on your system more. only for you to now cut copper pipe for the unit on top floor that is working well because you have not done what they call tagging. This is very, very important also. Then these are the outdoor units. This is how they look like. See all this? Then they, there are some equipment that is also required on your side, like manifold gauge. You need a gas uh, gas detector or soap water. You need uh, a pressure washing machine, screw. You need hammer. You need um, you need basic equipment that is required that a technician can have for their work. But the most important ones are the manifold gauge. Yeah, what what is ventilation? Ventilation is uh, the process by which clean air normally outdoor is intentionally brought to a space. I've explained this air that is not needed. Uh, air that is needed is brought from where it's not needed to where it's needed and vice versa. So if you need cooling, sometimes when your house is cool and there's no light, what does most of us do? We open our window that the air, the cool air is not needed outside, but it's needed inside. So you have to open your window. But if you have capacity to own your fan, you own your fan, it brings in the air through your window and force it in. Then when you talk of extraction, Air, the hot air and the smell is not needed inside. You take it from out inside and you take it out. Then you talk of extraction. Please don't forget that is the summary and the definition of that. So they can they utilize those in kitchen to solve problems. In kitchen is that in kitchen we identify two components: heat and smoke. So if the smoke is becoming too much, it can affect your health. So it is not needed there. So you design an extractor or a kitchen hood to move them out. Then your ventilation can also serve the purpose of what they call pressure, um, pressurizing your building. This pressurizing of building is also needed to control 
a fire when it's being when it's consuming your building. So it's been being pressurized. It gives room for you to walk out without fire touching you. But most buildings in Nigeria does not actually have it. But some buildings do have it. Then these are the fan you see in HVAC system mainly. And these are units showing the supply air, then the chill water system, the heating element, a mixing box, economizer, outdoor air, then return air, then supply. So this is basically more like an uh, a ventilator. The essence of outdoor air coming in is to bring in oxygen. Then the return air coming from this place has been cooled. So and this one that is coming from outside is hot. So when they come here, they mix up and they pass through this component and the fan duty is to flow and supply it to where it is required. Then ventilation is needed in the kitchen. So I've explained where it is needed and their purpose. Then different kind of air in space. We have return air, exhaust air, outdoor air. So this is more like a heat recovery equipment. So you see how it works. A fresh air unit is coming from, is being supplied. Then the exhaust air is going out. Outdoor air bringing oxygen into the space. Then return air is all the air that is smelling, that is coming out of the building, follow through here, go through the exhaust and going out. Outdoor here goes through this and goes out through this. Almost done. Then this is hair handling units. The purpose of hair handling unit, it works like your indoor unit, but it's in a bigger form. It's re removed dirt, supply cool air within space. Then it has all the components that the indoor unit will have your house has. So this is how they look. They use them in central system. So we have, they have filter, heating coil, they have cooling coil, fan, economizer, heat recovery, pineal buses, and the rest. A small investment on your air conditioning system, preventing maintenance or servicing, offer multiple benefits. A well-maintained air condition perform better, even with it becomes old, or when it becomes old, or might work beyond the lifespan. Users should consider spending a small amount now on, prevent, on preventive maintenance service instead of wasting a lot of money on repairs work or replacement after the damage is done. So I wish you the best. So this is the maintenance plan. Please question time, we have limited time. So please, if you have question, those that are shy, you can type it in. Those that want to speak can go ahead and speak. Okay, I'm all here. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yes, okay. Go um, good evening. My good evening. Um, I like to know that you kind of you can use for um, probably checking um, um, the HVAC system. Probably like, There's um, sorry, sir. There's noise at your background. There's noise at your background. I cannot hear you clearly. I'm not in a good. Place. Okay. Can you hear me now? Ah. I don't think I can hear you clearly. There's noise in the background. Hello? Are you still there? If there's noise in your background, can you please text? Can you write it in the chat? Okay, Just no click on the I'll chat and I'll write it in the chat. I'll respond to you. Good evening, sir. Good evening, please. Good evening, sir. Yes. Good evening, um, please go straight. We don't have much time. My question is very simple, sir. Um, okay. What do you mean AB, ABS? Um, I know it's meant for power Automatic vote uh, regulator. It's, it's supposed to be ABL. They also have ABS. Okay. The automatic voltage stabilizer or automatic voltage regulator. Okay, okay. Okay, so it regulates it regulates power that goes into the um the yes. air conditioning yes the essence of that is that uh, can you please uh mute so I, you can mute so that i can talk no there's noise in your background so uh, what i'm saying the problem we have in Nigeria is that we have irregular power supply the voltage even if they bring the light it's not sufficient to power up most of our equipment in order for you to protect your equipment you need something to check the quality of power coming into your equipment. Because the essence of the AVR or ABS 
is to regulate. If it is sufficient, it allows you to go through your equipment and power it on. If it is not good, it shut that system. It will not power off, thereby saving the life of your equipment. Because if such power actually gets to your system, your compressor can be damaged. Your electrical panel can be burned. And if God will help you, if you don't have parts in the market, that equipment becomes useless to you. So it regulates and protects your equipment. Next question, please. Okay, good evening, sir. Good evening. Thank you very much. So I just want you to explain, you've done it before, but I didn't really get it. You see the outdoor unit and the indoor unit. I just want you to explain just briefly the working principle, you know, the how the condenser, the compressor would relate with the condenser and, you know, okay, how eventually okay. get cool air inside the building. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, let, me, let me use cause and effect uh, or input and output. What do we need from the output? We need cool air. They discover under liquid or fluids, we have gas and water. Water can actually do refrigerating, but not required. And not because it cannot be compressed. Any liquid cannot be compressed. So they resort to using gas. And in gases, we have different kinds of gas. We have oxygen, carbon dioxide, and the rest. They discover a group of gases has what they call a refrigerating effect. And that refrigerating effect, before you can get it, you need to first of all compress it with a compressor. That black man in the outdoor unit. So after, after that man compresses it, the next stage he goes to the outdoor unit that has the condenser. So because the compressor has compressed it, it increases the temperature and pressure. And the work of the condenser is to discharge the hot parts. The hot temperature out. That's why you see your vendors. Even sometimes some of us will dry clothes in front of the AC because heat is coming out of it. So when it pushes out that uh, temperature, the next stage is for the pressure to go down. And what handles that pressure is your expansion valve. Once the expansion valve takes care of the pressure, it now gains or acquires the refrigerating effect, which I call the cooling effect. And the last stage for the cooling to get to you is your evaporator. And that evaporator is installed in your indoor units. So once it gets to your indoor unit, the thing comes chilling. So the air is being sucked from your indoor, passed through the coil, and that coil there's a exchange. Hot air coming into cool air, what happens? It gets cooler. And it's being supplied into the room. So that is the brief explanation I can give. I hope you are get you got it. Yes, sir, I got you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Next question. I am not sure. I am. I am not sure. I got the writing. This is a test. When when fan fan air are taken now, did you say it is cool and makes comfortable for us? He takes it out and brings in a fresh air. Pull it and send it in for comfort. I might not understand clearly what you are saying. When, okay, when you say foul air, smelling air, are you talking, the person is talking of smelling air, foul air are taking out. Did you say it's, it's cool and makes comfortable for us? No, 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 no. The work of uh, AC, if I get your question correctly, is to cool. If you have quality air within space, it cools it. If you also have dirty air, if somebody eats or there's a uh, rotting beans or egg within the space that have not been that was kept there for a long time and it was broken, and that smell is within that space. If you own your AC, it's going to rotate it the same time. It's going to suck out the smell, cool it, and supply it. What you give it is what it cools within the space. If I got your question right. Hello? That is, uh, who asked the question? Ola body. Is Ola body on the line? Hello? Hello? Barakat. Uh, the courses. Hello? Hello, Barakat.
Do we have we people in the hand? Do we, we have can hear you. We can hear okay. you clearly. Uh, I said the, 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 the uh, lab board, the, the question he asked via the chat, I hope I've answered it. Or is it not in line? Is it not online? Okay, maybe we'll go to the next question. If you have next question, fine. If we don't have, then we close the class for today. Yes, uh, you have answered it. Okay. Hello, hello, sir. Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm on. I'm sir, on. I just go want ahead. to ask how okay. uh, the, the, the fan inside the is an evaporator. What yes. could be the, as in what can lead to uh, we opening it and cleaning it up during servicing? Because I noticed that when some technician want to do service, they don't like opening that up. Maybe a second, maybe once in a year or, or so. Uh, Is this supposed to be something that will be done every quarter or twice in a year or once in a year? No, your fan should not be tampered with if your maintenance plan mm -hmm. is followed concurrently as planned. Your fan, the only time you can check it is when you see any physical defect or you are hearing noise or it's wobbling. That is where you can check. Sometimes you just do physical check and see that it's working fine. If you do your physical check and you see that it's the city where the fan is located, it's not working as required. Probably something is wrong with that fan. You need to replace it. Because if you leave it with time, it will start generating noise and it starts affecting the performance of your unit. So it's not something you check almost every time. It could be once in a year, it could be by annual, but what you need is to do physical check. Okay, so, thank you, sir. So for your maintenance, if you want to do maintenance, let me just give you a clue, not for you to waste. Please, maintenance is not repair. Please, I'm begging you, maintenance is not repair. When you are doing your maintenance, what you look out for for the indoor unit is the filter. And check if your evaporator is blocked. Then your outdoor unit, you just pressure wash and make sure it is clean. And there's effective exchange of air in and out of the equipment. The same thing you do. Then you can check your electrical cables, check your copper cables if they are leaky. Most of the things you do are physical check. Then you check the electrical rating going into your units. So once you have done all those, you are done with your maintenance. In course of checking, you can now uh, discover some defects. Once you discover some defects, then you can list them down for repairs or replacement. Maintenance is actually very simple. It doesn't need a super science, but you need an experienced person to detect those problems. Next question, please. One or two more questions, then we'll close. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My expectation is a female to speak. I wanted to say that before. Go ahead. You talked about the ice coming out from the AC earlier. Yes. Because some, you know, you talk about the industrial AC. Yeah. Bringing up ice, but I know that some split AC do form ice. Yes, I I understand. Uh, once your AC is not properly uh, maintained, it gives that if the too many dust covering the evaporator coil or the condenser coil, it begins to form ice. Another thing that can also cause is a shortage of refrigerant or overcharging. If the cooling is too effective and they require hot air that should pass, you know, if they require hot air pass through the cooling, there is going to be heat exchange. The air, the air coming from your room is at 20 and it's passing through the evaporator coil that is at 15. There will be heat exchange. And as the hot air goes through the evaporator, the temperature drops. If there are blockage in the system, the evaporator coil will start blocking we start blocking the cool air and it's blocking the cool air. Instead of it to be exchanged, the cool air will start reducing the temperature until water will now start falling into ice on the surface. You get my point? So the only thing you can use to solve it is for you to do your maintenance. Your guys need to pressure wash the equipment and remove all the dirt and they need to do a thorough cleaning because if they don't do thorough cleaning, after one or two weeks, that ice might resurface. Again. Next question, please. Yeah, sir. Uh, you spoke about uh, the aluminum fins on the condenser yeah. coil getting yeah. uh, blocked, 
and yeah. uh, thereby affecting the compressor and making the air conditioner conditioning unit to give a bad performance. So, yeah. and you gave us the option of the pressure washing the aluminum fins. But don't you think uh, if the pressure from the pressure washer is too much, it will actually get the aluminum fin blocked? Or is there any specific uh, recommended uh, PSI for the pressure washer for it to be used on the aluminum fin? There's no particular pressure. Different pressure has low, medium, and high, depending on what you want to do. You know that uh, pressure wash is multipurpose. That high can actually remove paint from wall. You must have seen where they use pressure wash to remove paint from wall. I don't know if you yes. noticed. Uh, they yeah. can also <laughs> use it to remove advance. When you are yeah. doing your AC, you can use low or medium. They also have enough pressure to bring it out. Then check the way your fin are installed. If they are installed vertically, you need to go up that same route. Don't go the opposite route. If it is up and down, you need to go then go. If you need to go vertical, yeah. the way the wing are installed, you will do it that same way. Yes, Mr. Paul. Hello? Hello, who is blind? Any questions? Are we satisfied? I think we have spent at least almost uh, 7 30. So, in, uh, uh, Barakat, in the absence of no other question, I think I'll draw the curtain for today. Like I said, please be passionate about your what you are learning. It's going to take you to places. Learn how to do your report, conditional assessment, do your audit. This same learning of maintenance can be extended to other components like lifts generator and the rest, and take care of your property as you take care of your body. We are definitely designed to be maintenance person right from bed. When our body smells, we bath. When our teeth smells, we wash. When our hair is rough, we comb. That is what your building is all about. Do it before somebody sees it. That is your duty as property manager and facility manager. So I draw the curtain for today. So if you need to reach me, you can reach me. You have any issues in your building, you can reach me. Let me just drop. I don't know. Uh, is, Barakat, is she offline? Yes, I, I think she is offline. Thank so you I've so dropped, much. So I drop my number on the chat so you can pick if you need. You can call me up. You can chat me up. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, sir.